you and good afternoon. This is Sam Vaughn for Sam Sports Report. We'll start with Mizzou over the weekend. They were the only team to win of the local teams. Ole Miss had runs and Missouri had runs, but they well, Missouri was able to keep them under baskets when they were on the runs. Hermit Davis is the coach, was the coach. In fact, he got fired. Old Miss led with 5.43 to go in the but the Missouri Tigers were able to put the hammer down. But not the hammer of the hammer. They didn't win by much. 82-77. It was closer than that. Missouri beat Old Miss at Old Miss by 12. Mizzou gets a double by for the first time in the SEC tournament since joining the SEC back in 2011. Frankly, I think Missouri should be a 7, but all their lines up to be an 8. Kobe Brown was tied for the evening score with both Carter and, and had played one of his best games. With a year of eligibility left for COVID, a lot of Tigers have Mizzou must players can return. NBA draft, Isaiah Mosley being another player. I don't know if the Missouri will keep him after so many problems with him. It doesn't seem to make much sense for Missouri to keep him. Also, another person that could also return, Noah Carter. Missouri is celebrated. Those players, and including Sean East, could play another year. Now all the players can come back as long as Missouri accepts their request. It was Trey Gilman and Nick Honor and DeAndre Goldston's last game as a Tiger. Dominated by Texas, Kansas splits the series between Texas and Kansas. KU is still number one seed according to Joe and Artie's bracket in Kansas City. Right now, if Kansas and Missouri won, they are slated to play each other on the Kansas City bracket. They use the number one overall seed in the Big 12 tournament. They will either play West Virginia or Texas Tech in Kansas City in the Sprint Center for the Big 12 tournament. KU has won by six if you include both games against West Virginia. West Virginia won only by two at the Allen Fieldhouse. Since KU has lost three in a row, they have looked much better in that stunt. That was as far as the streak went. Number eight, West Virginia will play number nine, Texas Tech. KU beat Texas Tech both times. KJ Adams had 21 in the loss. Kansas State has ne never led in the second half against West Virginia. They had an opportunity to be number two with a win, but K-State never led against West Virginia, as we said. Never led in the second half. Kansas State will be three, the three seed in the Big 12 tournament and will play TCU at the Sprint Center. Dill Sills re could return to Kansas State after a COVID year, and so is Clint Cam Carter. We've got more to cover on this topic. Four, 
game over. Instead, see that look in his eye. I wasn't alert in time. The Royals are 9 and 2 in the Cactus League. Maybe the Royals can have a positive year from this. But one thing you know is to never take spring training seriously. Also, Travis Kelsey on Saturday Night Live. More with me and Jason. This is Sam Vaughn for Stan's Sports Report. Baseball is back. And starting in the 2023 season, no longer will it be the only major North American professional sport without a clock. Let's take it in. Among the most transformative set of changes to the game in well over half a century is what Major League Baseball hopes can serve as a panacea for so many of its problems. A pitch clock. 20 seconds with runners on base, 15 seconds when they're empty. It's really not about changing the game. It's about making sure that we put the very best form of baseball on the field. It's time to advance. This best form of baseball, in the eyes of the commissioner, looks like the faster-paced game of the 1970s and 1980s, with the far better tuned athletes of today. In addition to the pitch clock, MLB is banning extreme defensive shifts, with two infielders on each side of the second base bag, and all of them with their feet on the dirt. MLB is also increasing the size of the bases from 15 inches to 18, which will cut the distance between the bags by four and a half inches, ostensibly encouraging more stolen bases. All of the changes are in service of not just cutting down on game times, but inspiring more action. A legacy-defining goal for Manfred. If the transition goes as MLB believes, baseball games should shed at least 20 minutes of game time, something that has been borne out during spring training games. Of course, with new rules, there are bound to be hiccups. The matchup between Boston and Atlanta on February 25th illustrated the most extreme version of that. Juiced, and he wasn't alert in time. The rules are straightforward, and as they did during testing in the minor leagues last year, they'll take some time for players to get used to. Catchers must be within the batter's box lines with nine seconds left on the clock. If they aren't, it's an automatic ball. Hitters need to be in the batter's box and facing the pitcher, ready to hit, with eight seconds remaining. Otherwise, as the Braves learned, it's an automatic strike. This is baseball in 2023. Pitchers who don't start their deliveries before the expiration of the clock get charged an automatic ball. Further, pitchers will be limited to two pickoff attempts. And if they try a third to no avail, they'll be called for a balk. Pitch clock violations are not subject to replay, but teams can challenge illegal defense. There's going to be a period of adjustment. That we, we all understand that. Over the long haul, we believe that the benefit that we will see from these changes make it worth the risk. A new reality is upon us. The clock is here. The shift is gone. The stolen base is back. Change is nigh. And baseball can only hope it's better for it.